and welcome back for another video on Norse mythology. As I mentioned at the end of the last video, this video is going to be probably my favorite in all of the ones I'm doing on Norse mythology because it is the most interesting tale in my opinion and it is on Utgard or Loki. So let's go ahead and get into it. This is relating to Utgard or Loki. And as you would expect from the inclusion of Utgard in his name, Utgard or Loki translates to Loki of the Outyards and represents the more wild and chaotic version of the Inangard, Loki of Asgard. He is the ruler of a castle in Jotunheim, Land of the Giants. It's first important to note that versions of the tales do vary, and as it is passed down by Snorri, who is known to embellish tales, there are features in the story that very clearly don't align with traditional Norse myth. Interestingly, it is also thought that at one point in the original myth, Utgard or Loki was in fact Loki himself. The tale as it is frequently told begins with Thor and Loki traveling in a land far away from Asgard, whereby they come upon a farm and choose to stay the night with the farmer and his family. While here, Thor offers his goats for dinner with the knowledge that he can bring them back to life later on. He lays the hides down on the floor and instructs the family to add the bones to the pile once they're finished with the meat. The farmer had two children, Theofi and Roskaba. The boy, Theofi, ignored Thor's instructions to immediately place the bones in the pile and instead broke open one of the leg bones and sucked out the marrow before finally placing the bones in the pile. The following morning, Thor struck the goat remains with his hammer to bring the goats back to life. He instantly noticed that one had a lame leg. He knew the reason for this and became enraged at the farmer for ignoring his instructions. To calm him and save them from certain death, the farmer quickly offered his children to Thor as his servants and Thor accepted. Thor, Loki, as well as their new additions, Theofi and Roskaba, set off toward Jotunheim. When night fell, they decided to make camp in a seemingly abandoned hall that they had come upon. In the night, however, they were awoken by an earthquake. They quickly discovered that these rumblings were caused by the snores of a giant who was outside. Thor, with his hatred of giants, immediately went forward and tried to kill the giant. However, he woke up and introduced himself as Skrymir, or Boaster. Skrymir then picked up his glove, which turned out to be the empty hall that the group had just been sleeping in just moments ago. And he offered to join them on their trip, and the god agreed, and off they went. After some time, they decided to rest under an oak tree, and Skrymir promptly fell asleep. This meant trouble for the group, as all of their provisions were being held by the giant in a huge bag with huge knots, fit for a giant. Thor attempted to untie the knot, but after failing to untie the knot, instead tried to kill Skrymir yet again by striking him on the head with his hammer. When the giant awoke, he asked if a leaf had fallen on his head. As the night went on, Skrymir's snores once again grew thunderous. This annoyed Thor, and again he tried to kill Skrymir, so he struck him on the head once again. Once again, however, Skrymir awoke and this time asked if an acorn had fallen on his head. Thor, for the third time within the night, tried to kill Skrymir again. This time, after striking him on the head, Skrymir awoke and asked if some nesting birds had shaken some dirt onto his face. When the morning came, Skrymir finally departed and the group continued onward toward Utgard. Around noon, the group finally came to Utgard, but when they arrived, the gates were locked. No one was there to open the gates, however, they discovered that they were able to easily slip through as the gates were made for giants. After making their way inside, they came upon a hall filled with giants who were eating and drinking, one of whom was Utgarda Loki, king of the castle. Utgarda Loki promptly made fun of the group for being so small, and the group did not take kindly to this. Loki was first to react and told the giants that there was no one that could eat faster than he. Utgarda Loki set up a contest between Loki and Logi to challenge Loki's wild claim. One plate of meat was set between the two men 
and the challenge was to see which of the two men could eat their way through the meat to the middle of the plate the quickest. By the time Loki had gotten to the middle of the plate of meat, he discovered that his opponent had not only eaten his way to the middle of the plate of meat, but had eaten through the bones and the plate as well. Thialfi was next to react and challenge someone to race him as he was extremely fast and believed he could beat anyone in the castle. Utgarda Loki set up this contest between Thialfi and Hugi on a racetrack. Hugi not only made it to the finish line first, but then doubled back to meet Thialfi. In a second race, Hugi was once again the victor. In the third and final race, Hugi finished the race while Thialfi was still only halfway done. His worst race yet. Next to challenge the giants was Thor. His challenge to the castle was a drinking contest. Unlike the other two, he was not adept at this. Utgarda Loki informed him that finishing the horn in one gulp made you great, two gulps meant you were fair, but that no one in the castle was so poor as to take more than two gulps. Thor drank what he could in one gulp, but realized he had barely made a dent in the liquor. Even with a second gulp that strained his breath, there was still plenty in the horn left to go. He drank one final gulp, his biggest yet, but there was still too much left, so he gave up after that. Ugarda Loki then challenged Thor to simply pick his cat up off the floor, but Thor once again failed this task due to his small stature. Thor then angrily challenged those in the castle to wrestle and was set up in contest with Eli, an old servant woman. Once again, he failed this task. The giant announced that there would be no further tasks and the group stayed the night in the castle. Before departure in the morning, Utgard and Loki led them from the castle and let them in on a little secret. The knots in the provision bag that Thor was trying to untie were actually wrought in iron. And he also told them that he would have actually killed him had he actually struck him with the hammer but he had actually been striking a mountainside, leaving three valleys in his wake. Of the contest, he revealed the following, that Loki had actually done well considering his opponent was actually fire. See, Logi means fire, and here it was the literal sense. And Thofi had actually raised thought. Hugi means thought, and no one can outrun thoughts. The horn that Thor was drinking from was actually connected to the sea. The giants were actually scared he was going to drain the sea, and their journey home would show just how much he had drained with his gulps. The cat that Thor was trying to pick up? It was actually Jormungand, the serpent of Midgard. He had raised it from the sea and into the sky. And finally, Eli was actually old age, and Thor took a long time to fall in that fight. This is why Utgarda Loki told them that they would leave and never return. They had done these great, nearly impossible feats and almost succeeded at each. So here's what the prose Edda has to say. I shall tell you the truth now you are out of my castle, and if I have a say, you shall never enter it again. And I would indeed never have let you in if I had known your strength beforehand, and you were very close to bringing us great disaster. You see, I cast illusions on you, so it was I who met you at first in the forest. And when you tried to untie the food bag, I had tied it with a magic wire, and you did not find out how to untie it. And when you drank from the horn and thought it slow to sink, I dare say that it was a miracle. I had not expected to be possible. The far end of the horn was submerged in the sea, but you did not see that. Now, when you come to the shore, you will see what kind of sip you drank from the sea. There is now a sandy beach where it used to be water. When learning of the trick Utgarda Loki had played on them, he once again raised his hammer in an attempt to kill the giant, but when he turned around, there was no giant or castle in sight. All there was was an empty landscape. So, now that we've gotten through the tale, you can see why it's one of my favorite tales, because there are so many twists and turns, and it's just so interesting. So that's it for today's video. The next video is going to be a few tales all about someone we are very familiar with, Thor, but the tales are actually going to show a side of Thor we may not know, and one of those tales is actually going to be a story where Thor cross-dresses. So stick around for that one, and I'll see you guys then.